thank you very much for this warm welcome, uh, Shoba, and uh, special thanks uh, for, I feel deeply honored to have been invited to this lecture series. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Herman, for uh, attending and, and supporting our project. Uh, uh, you've been supporting the project for a long time. Uh, I'm uh, glad to hear you're in uh, Florence now. Uh, and uh, special thanks to, to Shoba for preparing this whole talk and uh, doing everything to provide a, a technical support, which in the end, sorry, I, I had some difficulties starting, but I think all is going to be well. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, going to talk about um, um, the uh, observ uh, ob observing migrant words, I, I called it, that is analyzing, documenting, and analyzing words that have migrated. Uh, there's a lot of talk going on about migration, but we sometimes tend for, to forget that this is kind of a natural condition, uh, not only of people, but also of things. Uh, and language and, and words uh, have migrated um, from many languages. And Italian is, is, is one of the foremost examples of a, a language providing material to other uh, languages. And uh, what I'm going to present is my work, uh, uh, the work I've done researching the, the, the fate of Italian loanwords, both in Europe and, uh, and beyond. And uh, when I say my work, uh, uh, of course, uh, I should say our work, the work uh, I have been doing in this past couple of years, um, uh, documenting uh, Italianisms, word from Italian, with along with uh, a great many, um, uh, 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 an important group of um, experts, colleagues uh, who have been contributing uh, precious uh, work to this OIM project, the project of an observatory of Italianisms uh, worldwide, Osservatorio degli Italianismi nel mondo. And um, uh, just uh, this last captatio benevolentiae, uh, um, thank God, uh, this is an online lecture. I, uh, I'm, uh, I must apologize if my, my voice uh, seems uh, maybe sometimes a little a little, uh, 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 well, I don't, I, I, I wouldn't know the word, but I have caught one heck of a flu there. So uh, I'm glad I, I, I can do this from, uh, from my home office. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to talk about uh, digital lexicography and language contact, and especially uh, this uh, OIM project. Uh, and uh, then uh, we'll go on uh, to um, give uh, concrete examples of lexicographical uh, data and their representation in our Osservatorio. And then uh, uh, I'd briefly like uh, to discuss uh, a couple of special cases um, which uh, very clearly show the winding paths of loan word migration, questi sentieri tortuosi, as you say in Italian, um, and uh, uh, are uh, very good examples of how intricate the history of a word uh, can be. So um, this OIM uh, project is um, to be seen within the context of language contact research. Uh, language contact, uh, of course, shows the relevance even of the peripheral are areas of language system. This is not about the inner workings of the language system, or so it may seem at first, but of course, uh, core components of uh, a, a language system like the phonology, uh, uh, the morphology, the syntax, the lexicon uh, are at play when uh, languages come into contact and uh, lexical material is borrowed from one language to the other. Um, so there's a variety of loan phenomena. And historically, uh, Italian is and uh, has been a very important contact language, language of, of uh, many uh, languages across the world. Uh, and uh, it is uh, the source of a great variety of uh, what we call Italianisms, both in specialized terminology like that of um, art, architecture, music, which would be probably the cases that would come to mind first if we, when uh, thinking of Italian, but also from finance, trade, and uh, some have even um, 
entered the broader uh, common vocabulary of a, 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 a couple of languages and quite a few languages worldwide. Dictionaries uh, can document lexical influences from other idioms. Both general dictionaries do that, uh, as well as uh, more specialized resources, which we can call um, language contact dictionaries or uh, dictionaries of loan words, uh, of which there are uh, uh, quite a few. Uh, and uh, inventories of um, linguistic borrowings, of especially lexical borrowings, um, are now becoming more common, although they are uh, still rare uh, in a comparative perspective. When they adopt a comparative perspective, uh, there is just uh, three or four of them, uh, of which uh, OIM is one. Um, there is indeed a new type of digitized parallel inventories, uh, that is databases that allow to observe the influence of borrowings in a specific language and compare it with the influence that uh, a word or other terms may have had in other languages, whereas the traditional idea of a dictionary is more a, a unidirectional uh, dictionary documenting one language or at uh, most uh, two languages, one language with its equivalents in an, uh, another language. So that cross-linguistic comparison about the results and the specific factors of uh, historical and cultural contact is what is at the core of our OIM project. It is an ongoing international project hosted by the Academia della Crusca in Florence, uh, and uh, it uh, is devised to uh, document the lexical impact of Italian as a donor language uh, worldwide. Although I must admit that uh, first and foremost, uh, we are focusing, and, and I'm uh, in my talk, I will focus on European examples, but here and there, I will mention other languages, uh, extra European, non-European languages too, which make uh, many, uh, the, the great majority of languages worldwide. So um, it is well known that Italian is a world language of culture and the arts, if uh, we consider of course, English uh, language, a world language, a language of uh, international communication and uh, French as a language that has had that role for a long time. Italian mm, has never had the role of a language of global communication, but it is a world language of culture and the arts. And uh, we can uh, cite uh, uh, Matteo Mottolese on that, uh, il momento di massima espansione dell'italiano come lingua della comunicazione artistica in Europa, il punto più alto, and I will just go on reading the English translation, I will not bother you, well, I, sometimes you will hear uh, some phrase in Italian in this talk, but I will not uh, always read out the uh, Italian, and I have uh, provided uh, English translations, of course. The moment of the greatest expansion of Italian as language of artistic communication in Europe would be the high point of a parabola char characterized by a, a rapid uh, rise in the 16th um, century and a gradual loss of ground beginning in the 18th century, mainly to the benefit of French. So we all uh, can also see that there are uh, heydays and and lows uh, uh, of uh, regarding the influence uh, uh, on the soft power, the cultural influence of language. Per secoli l'italiano è stato la lingua principale per quel che riguarda eh, l'arte, la, eh, la, la pittura, la scultura e architettura. I'm uh, citing this uh, um, uh, from memory because, sorry, I, I, I have uh, my... Uh, slides uh, covered by the Zoom screen, sorry. Um, Un'egemonia paragonabile solo a quella che più avanti avrà nel campo musicale. Uh, for centuries, Italian was the leading language in painting, sculpture, and architecture. Um, uh, hegemony cam comparable only to that which it would have later, um, uh, which it would ha later have in the field of uh, music. Right. Sorry. This this zoom screen that buzzer keeps bothering me <laughs> and uh, yes okay it's okay that's okay so you have very simple examples of that kind of uh, italian influence you have this um uh, rossinissimo where well, this is a, a typical 
uh, placard uh, uh, that uh, could be seen uh, a couple of years ago in Salzburg um, uh, at the University of Salzburg. And I'm, of course, um, uh, very much uh, aware of that um, uh, Italian cultural influence in uh, uh, a city of art and music like uh, Salzburg. And uh, this uh, was the name of a festival, Rossinissimo, which would be a made up Italianism based on the name of the composer Rossini uh, and uh, a suffix added, uh, adding some Italian flavor uh, to it and also uh, the uh, semantic uh, aspect of uh, intensification or Filfaltissimo, this is a German example, I'll just skip that. Uh, and we also have, of course, uh, serious lexicographical documentation of Italianisms in general dictionaries, like uh, uh, the Oxford English Dictionary here. We would have a, a special term typical of uh, North American uh, um, informal English, uh, a term, uh, uh, common slur for uh, uh, Americans, or in, in in this case, Canadians, because it's from Canadian slang. It's North American, but it's, it's Canadian, and more specifically from Canadian, a slur for um, um, Canadians of Anglo-Saxon origin used by Italian immigrants. Uh, so this is the kind of... Um, phenomenon uh, we want to document with the uh, Osservatorio. And uh, so I'll briefly discuss the terms prestito or uh, borrowing, uh, uh, loan word or um, uh, forestierismo, um, both uh, in Italian and in general linguistics. Uh, we can define uh, a borrowing, a prestito, as the result of the imitation of a linguistic model by a li uh, linguistic uh, community. Um, and we could, there are several uh, citations. Um, we can say that uh, uh, the borrowing, um, uh, borrow, uh, the prestito is the term both for the general phenomenon um, of interference, as uh, it has been called, uh, as a process of uh, uh, reproduction of foreign linguistic elements, and any specific single or multi-word lexical unit that reproduces in its form and in its specific meaning a given foreign pattern. And Harush Damayon, who has been working on this for a long time and has published a, 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 a very interesting book on the subject in 2013, uh, La Lingua degli Angeli, with that uh, sounding title, The Language of the Angels, uh, uh, a whole uh, study of the influence of Italian, both on a lexical level and uh, as far as um, the image and the attitude towards languages go, where Italian has been described as a, a harmonious uh, a musical language and so on. Uh, so uh, he gives us a definition of Italianism, Italianismo, un Italianismo è un prestito dall'italiano a un'altra lingua, oltre ai prestiti veri e propri, diretti e indiretti, si considerano anche l'induzione, i calchi e lo pseudoprestito. So an Italianism would be a borrowing, of course, from Italian to another language. And in addition to actual direct and indirect uh, 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 loan words, uh, which make a more or less direct way from one uh, uh, language to the other, uh, the term takes into account morphological bo borrowing, things like this rossinissimo, which we have seen, where a suffix is added for some kind of semantic uh, effect, calc, so word to word uh, translations, renderings in uh, another language, as well as uh, pseudo uh, uh, Italianism, pseudo borrowings, which reprodu reproduce um, uh, to a certain extent um, the image and some linguistic elements of a language without being part of the lexicon of uh, the uh, supposed, uh, the would-be source language. So this term covers a broad and very diverse phenomo uh, uh, phenomenology. Uh, there are those integral loan words with different degrees of uh, grammatical uh, adaptation, sorry uh, for that spelling error, morphological borrowings as we have seen, calc, pseudo loans, and so on. And now I'm going to give examples of what Stamayohan stated in his quote. 
Uh, so there are these monomorphemic units, these single word units, uh, such as uh, the uh, omnipresent reading formula, chow, all over Europe, chow is gaining more and more ground, uh, uh, and, and sometimes even uh, at the expense of uh, local forms of greeting, uh, but mainly in the meaning of uh, saying goodbye. It's present in various languages like uh, English, German, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Polish, Hungarian, as far as our documentation in the Observatorio goes so far. Uh, there are also multi-word uni multi units such as dolce vita, dolce far niente, and others, which are present, for, for example, in English, German, French, Polish, Hungarian, or those famous uh, suffixes, morphological elements as uh, uh, issimo, which I uh, have quoted several times now, also esco, esk in some uh, English adjectives, for example, uh, and uh, uh, used mainly in commercial and advertising jargon. So we we would uh, find forms like French affirissimo, German chicissimo, filfaltissimo, and so on, which add this kind of Italian flavor. And also, not in all cases, but sometimes um, a certain semantic um, um, addition of intensification, a meaning of uh, uh, intensification. Uh, verbal forms as the Italian maneggiare, can have a, a very a special evolution. Uh, verbs are general uh, uh, less frequent uh, uh, among uh, loan words, but there are some of them. And uh, maneggiare has had a very interesting career. It uh, was borrowed in the 16th century in the specific meaning of uh, horsemanship, mastering, governing a horse. And the resulting Italianism in English has then spread into numerous languages. So ma to manage, management, and so on is an, uh, an indirect Italianism, actually. And, and of course, the uh, English verb to, uh, to manage and, and all the derivations are uh, extremely present in many languages of the world. Uh, and uh, there can also be some cases of uh, proverbial phrases or mottos, such as the, the famous phrase uh, attrib attributed to uh, Galileo Galilei, e pur si muove, e pur si muove, so, uh, um, and the, the sun, of course, uh, French and English uh, uh, have that, while in German we even have a calc translation, und sie bewegt sich doch. And we have those famous pseudo loans as uh, the Italian sounding picobello in German. That sounds very Italian, but it doesn't exist in Italian at all. It, it's not, not part of the Italian lexicon. And as uh, some hybrid formations and partial cults like uh, French franco, which is of course an Italian element, de par, which is French, um, combining elements of Italian and uh, uh, the uh, respective target language. So. If you want to see how we document that, I give you just very few, not all of these, but very few examples uh, from uh, the DFIT OIM documentation. The DFIT is uh, in a way the precursor of the uh, OIM Observatory, the observatory, uh, but it is now part of the database. D DFIT uh, means Dizionario di Italianismi in Francese, Inglese, Tedesco, so Dictionary of Italianisms in French, English, and German, and um, here, which is complete, it, it uh, con contains uh, complete collections of, of lemmas of uh, Italianisms in those uh, three languages, and uh, this is how they are presented in the online version. So the famous greeting formula ciao uh, uh, is, of course, uh, described here accurately as actually stemming from a Venetian dialect, Ciao, and then has become a part of the Italian lexicon, and uh, it has um, uh, migrated uh, to uh, towards uh, French, English, and uh, German, of course, or uh, the case of Dolce Vita, this uh, multi-word unit, um, which is a rather recent Italianism, uh, which uh, was uh, introduced uh, in all those languages, as we can see, um, at the same time, uh, uh, with the launch of the famous Fellini movie, uh, and the Isimo uh, uh, suffix in the cases I quoted uh, before, um, 
would be presented uh, in um, as you can see and uh, this is the the, the rather uh, interesting case of manejare of this verb that is at the base of english i of course is is uh, here is inglese um, in um, the meta language of our dictionary which is italian um so uh, manage to the verb to manage mm, um, has an italian uh, etymology actually and it comes from a very specific um semantic uh, evolution and was first introduced as um a, a term of of uh, uh, of uh, equitazione as you say in italian horsemanship so uh, in a very special sector of the lexicon and has then spread to uh, the uh, general lexicon uh just to give you a glimpse of how uh, the uh, modern presentation, the more recent presentation of the Italianisms is in our new user interface is uh, just an uh, example of a musical term, Allegro. Allegro. Uh, and here you can see that uh, with respect to how to the more, I would say, sober presentation of the lexicographical data, uh, but also a little less informative and a little more traditional. Um, we have switched to a more colorful presentation, uh, giving um, way also uh, to uh, kind of a, a more general presentation. So you can always see which language family a term belongs to, and then you can click on that and you get more information. So it's a more sophisticated kind of uh, presentation. The same goes for a term like a uh, typical uh, art historical term like filigrana. Uh, and you can see um, on the right uh, the different uh, 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 the different meanings and also the kind of infographics you get because you, you get information on how many languages there are where the, the Italianism is found. Uh, you can always see uh, the whole a lemma list on the uh, on the left and so on so we have devised a database that aims to be more informative and aims to reach also say uh, an audience uh, which does not have a special preparation in linguistics uh, although we then give more detailed information you can already find uh, the uh, osservatorio uh, degli italianismi database uh, on um, uh, the website uh, www.italianismi.org and um, it gives you this kind of uh, information although I must say that not all of the lemma lists for all the languages are complete whereas we have a whole complete online dictionary uh, version of the GIFIT of the Dizionario di Italianismi in inglese, um, uh, in uh, francese inglese tedesco. But be aware that, of course, uh, um, this kind of presentation of an Italianism um, also has to take into account the fact that the weight of an Italianism in the system of the target or the recipient language may vary. Uh, Luca Seriani uh, has uh, observed that very acutely. Uh, um, that, that by simply presenting a list of Italianisms, you will not get uh, really an idea of what the relevance of the single terms is. So what we have uh, planned on and partly realized so far is also a system of um, giving uh, a level of uh, accuracy uh, and uh, diffusion of a, a term uh, within the database so that you can uh, somehow get an idea of um, how how uh, frequent it is in uh, in usage at what the relevance is whether it is just a, a term uh, from special uh, sectors of the lexicon uh, just kind of a jargon or whether it belongs to more um, general more central um, parts of the lexicon of a language. So what what he, what he says um, more precisely is that more than the quantitative data here, in, in the case of Italianisms, they are uh, more uncertain than ever. I think 
although in 15 years we have been able to resolve some of that uncertainty, is the qualitative uh, parameters that matter. I will mention four of them uh, of different relevance each. There is a balance of give and take between Italian and uh, another Romans here. He talks about um, Italianisms in Romans languages, but this can be applied to other language families too. The prevalence between uh, the Italianism uh, um, within the fundamental lexicon, the fundamental vocabulary, the presence of interjections and phraseological connective typical of everyday conversation, uh, which is a sign of intense penetration uh, into deep levels of oral language use. If you so, that is to say, if uh, you find Italianisms that have the function of an interjection or a, a, a discourse connective or something like that, it means that the contact between Italian and that language has been very intense, and uh, uh, usually uh, is centuries old. And uh, so uh, Italian has penetrated even core areas of at least the uh, oral language use. Um, whereas if you only find, say, um, Italianisms in some remote area of a specialized vocabulary, uh, you can conclude that the language contact uh, has been less intense. Uh, and the presence of autonomous semantic developments and uh, pseudo-Italianisms is also a sign of um, a long-standing uh, contact, or at least of the fact that Italian has some kind of image in uh, the other language. Whereas if there is no idea of uh, the source language system, you will hardly find pseudo-borrowings. Uh, the same goes actually for English, of course. There are... Uh, loads of uh, pseudo anglicisms in your uh, especially european languages so i'll just go on so these as i said there are not so many comparative studies of um um uh, contact in the lexicon and i'll just uh, say that um uh, the kind of language varieties we look at can be very diverse uh, can be languages which have had this long-standing intense contact, like French, Catalan, Spanish, Portuguese, German, English, all present in our dictionary now, or they can be more distant, typologically distant languages like Hungarian, Maltese, Mandarin, uh, which are also part of the um, OIM uh, documentation. And uh, of course, uh, extra European, non-European varieties like US uh, English, uh, Canadian English, Canadian French, and so on, um, have an important part in this uh, due to the impact of uh, um, immigrant groups and uh, the presence of their languages, in this case, Italian, and of course, Herman and uh, others, other colleagues like, like uh, from Toronto, for example, Franco Pierno and others, have uh, worked on that and uh, have uh, um, contributed uh, uh, data uh, for uh, our uh, Osservatorio. So a uh, systematic approach to the lexical footprint of language in, in, in multiple contact languages is something you only find in a uh, dictionary called Dictionary of European Anglicisms, the one by Gerlach, uh, you'll see it here on the on the left, uh, which is more of a traditional dictionary, but very interesting because it considers uh, the lexical footprint of uh, the le lexical impact of English in 16 European languages. Uh, then the Dutch project of the Nederlands of Warden Weltweit, and, and they have even an Outlane uh, Warden Bank, so a database of loan words, which, can, which you can find uh, uh, online. Um, and you have a German project, which is called Lienwort Portal, a project on loan words um, uh, from German uh, in a, a set of historical contact languages. It is made by the Institut für Deutsche Sprache. And the, those three projects vaguely resemble ours within the Italo Romance area, the only one, the only project regarding uh, multiple language contact from Italian towards other languages is, is uh, ours, is the OIM. So uh, we're dealing with a project that is singular in its kind. And so we had to defy, define a great deal of uh, uh, 
parameters because we there was no actual model to follow. It's not like other dictionaries where you have a model, you want to do a loan word dictionary, you can take some of the traditional dictionaries as a model. This was not the case. And this would be, for example, a screenshot from the from the loan word uh, Lienwort portal of the uh, German, which is very interesting. It, it is very limited as to its database. It is not as broad in its database as uh, our Italian project is, but it, of course it covers the um, traditional historic contact languages uh, of German, like like uh, uh, Polish, Slovene, uh, Hebrew, of course, and there's a, a lot of uh, documentation of uh, German loan words, for example, in Ivrit. Uh, and uh, so you get this documentation of Italian loan words um, as we did in the first version of the Dizionario di Italianismi in Francese, Inglese, Tedesco, which was more of a traditional print dictionary and then uh, digitized and uh, rendered as a database in from 2013, 14. Uh, and uh, it then uh, ha it now has transformed into this Osservatorio del, uh, del Italianismo nel Mondo, which has become an international network, uh, research network hosted uh, by the Academia della Crusca, which has defined it one of its three strategic projects. But of course, as I said uh, in the beginning, uh, it, this is all work uh, we have to thank for uh, those numerous experts, researchers, colleagues, who, who uh, uh, participate and, and, and uh, contribute uh, their philological and linguistic research work uh, to uh, uh, our project in order to build this database. So I um, think I can uh, skip those details, but uh, I will just uh, say that uh, our new web platform provides historical etymological information about the Italian source words and all the main characteristics of the loan word, the loan type, the loan meanings, the semantic change uh, it has been subject to. And those are innovations which you usually don't find in this kind of dictionary. And that, uh, of course, for each of the languages in which a word is attested. And in addition, uh, more details are provided, like spelling variants. That is what you would also expect in a more um, classical dictionary. Uh, um, some data on uh, lexical gender grammatical categories, but we also provide loanword pronunciation, both in the IPA transcription and uh, with an audio file. The audio files are not yet uh, all complete, but that is uh, interesting um, uh, so far as uh, you get real loanword pronunciations because it's 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 not often it's not it's not that easy. Of course, you could uh, always look up uh, the Italian original pronunciation in a, a pronunciation dictionary, but what we want here is also uh, get a, a grip of uh, what the loan word phonology does to the words. And of course, uh, the phonological system of the uh, target land, recipient languages um, can change um, the outcome um, pretty, uh, pretty much. Uh, and of course, we have a whole set of historical data dates, years of first attestation, uh, when a word entered use, and if we have the, uh, if we uh, actually have the data, uh, also when it uh, went out of use, because uh, within our database, we have quite a few uh, uh, um, lemmas uh, which uh, are not uh, in use anymore, archaic terms, which are Italianisms, which are part of the historical heritage of language, but are not uh, in use anymore. Uh, so, well, you can just have a look at the website. The project structure is, I think, pretty clear. It's just a growing structure and the whole work group is divided into single work units for the single languages. And so uh, that means uh, that the project is becoming more and more complex. Uh, uh, I coordinated myself along with uh, Lucilla Pizzoli, a colleague from Rome, and until 2022, uh, Luca Serianni, the uh, uh, a real expert on in the field, who uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, tragically passed away last year, and um, we have um, um, a great many consultants we can rely on, which we are very glad about, uh, and 
uh, getting more and more international, even beyond Europe. And uh, we're glad to have, for example, the OIM uh, Canada and OIM North America um, um, uh, research group, um, which is made up by Franco Pierno, Herman Haller, uh, Maya Sherwood Gross, and uh, some other uh, uh, colleagues and doctoral students. And that, of course, uh, makes it necessary to have regular meetings and uh, exchange uh, and uh, that is uh, what goes on in order to resolve uh, doubts in order to define uh, the parameters of the database uh, and in order to evaluate the italianisms uh, we uh, uh, we receive and the collections uh, of uh, italianisms so uh, i I think I can skip some of the technical details in order to give you an idea of how the inner workings of the system of the database are. Uh, I'll just say on uh, the uh, workflow that we have some mm, specific challenges and some routine procedures, uh, which uh, are dealt with automatically or semi-automatically or in some cases remain uh, manual philological tasks which demand uh, the evaluation of a single person with a philological preparation which makes which sometimes slows the work down but of course makes it more accurate uh, so uh, as far as the lexicographical macro structure the whole of the lemma list uh, and its uh, uh, ordering is concerned. Uh, you have um, the challenge of data migration because we're still importing lemmas from the uh, former version of the uh, digitized uh, DFIT dictionary. And we have some other collections stemming from an earlier project on Italianisms, uh, a documentation of Italianisms in uh, about 80 languages, which is very good for us. So some of the data have already been collected, but of course they uh, uh, we don't have them uh, right there in the format uh, we would like to have them. So there's a lot of uh, work to be done to adapt them to the standards of our database. And uh, regarding macro and microstructure of this uh, lexicographical this dictionary database, which is more like a collection of dictionaries, are, uh, uh, is a set of testing procedures in order to see um, if the database yields the results we want it to yield. Uh, and that is going on mainly between the single work units for the single languages, contact languages of Italian, and the IT unit in Florence. And as regards to uh, what, what has been called in lexicography and uh, meta-lexicography, the media structure, so the whole linkage between data in a dictionary or a database, uh, the cross-linkage uh, of data on the Italian source word, the etymological terms which are at the uh, base of the Italianisms is, of course, uh, uh, a large portion of work that has to be done. And we have uh, mainly Luci Lapizzoli and colleagues in Rome working on that. Uh, so this uh, project combines both uh, experts on the different languages, experts on Italian and experts on especially Italian lexicography. Uh, well, I think uh, we do, will not have the time to uh, get uh, more uh, into detail, but uh, if you want to imagine how the La Sala delle Macchine, how I sometimes uh, call it, the, 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 the gear, the inner workings of the machine are, uh, this is all uh, menus and parameters uh, that have to be provided in order to get a lexicographical representation like you saw it in the user interface. And one resource I can recommend for use for any of you who are interested in uh, language contact between Italian and other languages uh, is um, this um, uh, Banca Dati Bibliografica, the bibliographical database we provide on our website. Uh, there's about eight, nine hundred or maybe a thousand um, uh, texts available now. Not for As for now, it's just a bibliography, but we're working on providing also the PDF versions of, of those titles, of those articles, books, and so on. Uh, from different areas of um, uh, studies on um, loanwords um, in Italian uh, or 
Italian loan words in other languages. So you can uh, have different uh, search criteria and you can uh, search this database uh, according uh, to uh, to the language, the target language, or according to uh, uh, the context, uh, according um, to um, these sections of the of the lexicon uh, you're interested in. And just to give you an idea of how the data plays out and how uh, how quantitatively uh, uh, how uh, how those different collections of Italianisms um, uh, compare, uh, which is very much what we want to be able to do with the database, ha have a means of comparison between the different impact Italian has ha had uh, on, on, on different languages at different moments. You can see that, uh, uh, of course, as for now, uh, we still have uh, the greatest portion of um, Italianisms coming from uh, French, English, uh, German, which also corresponds to the fact that those are uh, major um, European languages which have had a long-standing contact with uh, uh, Italian and in some cases have been languages of mediation, both uh, German, English and French, especially French though, uh, of Italian words to other languages. Some of the uh, uh, Italian words uh, going into French have been have, have have migrated on to German, for example, or Spanish. Uh, but there's quite a few of them in uh, Polish, Hungarian too, and uh, they're not all the same. So there's also some special developments, and so that's a very interesting idea we get about cultural history here. Uh, also, Catalan, uh, Spanish, and Portuguese are of course important uh, contact languages. You may wonder why the great Spanish language, Castilian. Uh, is has a relatively small share of Italianism so far. That is, of course, due to the fact that uh, within Spanish at the moment, all we have is those uh, Italianisms, historical, especially historical Italianisms, that have um, uh, that, that that are present in the European variety of Spanish. But of course, there are twenty other varieties, and there is especially one area of the uh, uh, Hispanophonia uh, in the uh, Rio de la Plata area uh, between uh, Argentina and Uruguay, uh, where you have thousands, literally thousands of Italians due to the uh, presence of uh, uh, large um, uh, Italian immigrant groups, uh, which have influenced the Spanish variety, the local Spanish variety. And uh, we are now, uh, we now have a work group uh, uh, preparing collection of those Italianisms. And so the, the, the uh, proportion of Spanish, of Italianisms in Spanish is set to grow, to grow uh, in, a, in a relevant, very, very relevant way. So, well, uh, as for data, as for now, we have about 13,000, a bit less than 30, 13,000, um, uh, loan words uh, documented within the database, but of course that is just uh, for now, and uh, that's a growing number. And uh, they are based on uh, about five to six thousand Italian words, which makes it clear that, of course, not all the Italianisms are single cases, but in many cases, an Italian uh, uh, source word. Uh, translates or is, uh, is, is is taken on in different languages. And uh, just to give you an idea uh, on uh, which uh, the most important uh, uh, parts of the uh, lexicon are, um, uh, as for Italianisms, you have uh, uh, a very clear uh, winner here, it's a musical terminology that is the most important part of all Italianisms. Although, of course, as our research work goes on, that uh, proportion is uh, set uh, to, to, to fall a little bit because we have other sectors which ha have not been as highlighted uh, so far, whereas music has been a favorite subject of study and musical terminology from Italian. And so we have a lot better data on that. Whereas um, uh, for art and architecture, we all somehow know that Italian is the world language is very important, but uh, historically there is much more 
uh, to be to be seen here, and there are many more terms uh, stemming from Italian than has been officially documented so far. But uh, well, just going through trade finance is uh, in many European languages a very very important uh, uh, part of the lexicon, uh, which is really really full of Italianisms. In German banking language, if you you go to open an account in your bank. Is full of 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 terms like agio, giro, and so on. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, you maybe wouldn't think uh, that. Of course, uh, gastronomy, enology, wine, food, and so on is a very important sector, especially in the non-European varieties. We have uh, seen that is maybe uh, um, well, it is certainly uh, the sector of the lexicon that is uh, still growing and uh, as of now uh, the, the the most uh, relevant as for recent Italianisms but as I said art and arch architecture but also uh, the whole area of navigation uh, uh, maritime terminology is very important there Italian is is second only to Dutch probably. And there's one other sector which would you would maybe not expect to be so um, uh, relevantly uh, um, uh, filled and provided by uh, Italian, and that is uh, the whole military sector, especially historical military architecture, also weaponry, and uh, Italian from the 15th, 16th century on has provided uh, a wealth of terms um, to languages like French, English, uh, German, Spanish, and so on, due mm, to the craftsmanship and uh, to uh, uh, those architects and those condottieri, uh, uh, which, uh, uh, who, who um, uh, provided pieces of uh, weaponry, military architecture, and so on. I, I will just, uh, I will just give one example in closing. I'll, I'm, I think I don't have more than two, three, five minutes, maybe. Yes, you can go ahead and uh, another four, five minutes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, uh, well, what I can show you here is the visualization of movements of lexical migration, which, of course, a database use uh, calls for. Uh, we would not want to stick with the traditional uh, dictionary uses. This is something that uh, database format can uh, provide very well, although this is not uh, uh, it's it's not as easy as it looks. Uh, but uh, linking the um, lexicographical data to georeferenced uh, um, points on 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 maps, can give you uh, a very good idea on uh, the origins of the single uh, Italianisms here. I've done it just for that portion of the Italianisms that have a dialectal mark, because of course not all the Italianisms come from standard Italian, uh, but many of them uh, um, uh, originate from different dialects and different cities like Venice or Genoa, uh, according uh, to uh, the uses and according to the contact areas. So, uh, for example, let's see, uh, there is quite a few of them from uh, Venetian dialect. Um, and we can elaborate on those. The most famous one is, of course, Chao, but there are many more. Uh, and they, if we just look at this, have migrated especially to the uh, south um, eastern part of the German speaking area and the Slavic speaking areas because of the uh, uh, of course uh, the geographical location whereas for example Genoa has provided quite a few terms from uh, for uh, different types of of vessels and uh, ships and and those went uh, especially to the Gallo-Romania to the and uh, to French um and you can have a look at that. There's a link um, uh, here. And I will just uh, 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 conclude on, on two or three sp special cases uh, that show that um, we can go uh, much beyond the traditional loanword dictionaries with the data we uh, have collected for the OIM. 
there is uh, one interesting case, of course, quarantine, quarantena, uh, which we unfortunately we have had to deal with a lot uh, in the in the past two or three years of the pandemic, and um, that has uh, led some researchers to look into the history of the word, and uh, what we see is, of course, this is uh, a curve we get for German statistics that in many languages uh, the use of the uh, of, of words like quarantine quarantine in english quarantaine in uh, french and etc has gone uh, uh, up well, this is a very steep curve and uh, we have read a lot of times i think uh, it has been stated uh, in english coverage of the subject too many times that there is a venetian origin of the word an italian and especially a venetian origin but there we are wrong uh, as uh, parenti and tomasin teach us uh, because in venice itself this um special uh sense of um 40 days of uh, sanitary isolation, which is uh, the origin of the word quarantena, uh, uh, the word in Venice uh, was contumacia, contumacia from Latin, and uh, you don't find, uh, actually find quarantena uh, in uh, the documents of the, of the 14th, 15th, 16th century but it is a word originating from northern italy that is uh, uh, pretty sure and uh, it seems that at least in some of the european languages it has spread from uh, italian and what is interesting well french quarantaine uh, seems to be um, a part a case apart because uh, it can easily be explained just on the basis of uh, French quarantaine and uh, medieval Latin quarantena, uh, quarantina, uh, English quarantine, as Oxford English Dictionary, uh, as the OED tells us, uh, should be probably partly a borrowing from Italian, especially in the original uh, sense. Uh, well, not the original religious sense, but uh, the derived sense of a period of 40 days of uh, isolation of people um, in order to uh, prevent them from spreading uh, disease. Uh, but in German, we have a pretty interesting evolution. And for a long time, it has been thought that German quarantäne had been replaced. The etymology of quarantäne was uh, simply uh, French, having replaced a former Italian quarantena, quarantina. But if you look into data as uh, we provided in the OIM and into some uh, single uh, research that has been undertaken in the past two or three years, uh, and if you look at other levels of documentation, not only the spelling variants and so on, but also the pronunciation, uh, there is an interesting thing to be found. Well, this is from a German etymolo etymological uh, dictionary stating uh, that whole story of uh, uh, quarantaine, um, French quarantaine replacing Italian quarantena. But uh, if you look at the pronunciations that are uh, currently used in uh, German, in many areas of Germany, there are essentially two, and there is quarantaine, which is very near to French quarantaine, and you have in Austrian German and uh, Bavaria and uh, many parts of southeastern uh, Germany uh, pronunciations uh, that resemble uh, more the Italian quarantena because it's quarantene. And they have remained even in, um, say, um, formal pronunciations in those areas. And um, there have been studies, sociophonetic studies, on the diffusion of uh, these variants. And so uh, it is very probable that uh, we have, for German, the co-occurrence of two etymologies, one French, one Italian. So that would be another Italianism to include in our database. And just uh, to conclude, I give a last special case. It's gabbione. Gabbione in Italian means a big chest, big basket, uh, but with a very special 
uh, sends. It uh, is a large wire mesh basket filled with building materials of stones or sand or whatever uh, in order to fortify a position. And it has been used, used in civil engineering, landscaping, but also uh, and especially in military uses. And uh, in Italian, that is almost a, a forgotten uh, sense of the word because Italians tend uh, when they hear gabbione, uh, tend to think of a big, uh, uh, more of a uh, uh, a big, um, how could you say, cage. It's it's more a cage, a real cage, where you have, for example, uh, uh, a mafioso who will be, uh, uh, when they go to court and they take them to court, they have these gabbioni in order to prevent them from fleeing, from escaping. And uh, so most Italians think uh, of uh, gabbione as as this kind of 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 uh, of, a, uh, of a of a cage, whereas this uh, gabbione, in the sense of uh, landscaping, uh, 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 an element of fortification of a wall, uh, is much less frequent. And uh, it is indeed one of the historic meanings of the Italianism. And as an Italianism, Gabione has spread to um, German, Spanish and other languages in this uh, historic sense of uh, a big basket, uh, wire mesh and filled with material. And it's pretty common uh, in German landscaping, gardening. So, so most Germans know the word. It's this kind of thing. Uh, whereas in Italian, the word, this sense of the word is uh, basically forgotten. And it is beginning to be used in uh, uh, Spanish too, as a, a corpus uh, study uh, shows here. So uh, what we sometimes have is the fact that uh, Italian words are uh, recycled from historical uh, uh, levels of, uh, of, uh, of the vocabulary, and they can attain a, a, a new life in a way. And I just uh, conclude on these examples, which are more like uh, trending or incipient Italianisms, which you find in, in some European uh, languages. Um, there are some interesting cases like Lampione, which gives Portuguese Lampion and has become with a totally autonomous semantic uh, uh, evolution uh, a synonym for a soccer fan of the Benfica soccer club in uh, uh, Lisbon, or basta, which has evolved into words like basta politik, uh, basta entscheidung in, 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 in German uh, political jargon. It's a kind of a, a apodictic policy style where you always say basta. Uh, or the la famous Latte Macchiato Muta, the, the, the mothers uh, of infants entertaining a very urban lifestyle, especially in Berlin, uh, 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 who were dubbed uh, by some journalists Latte Macchiato Muta, where of course the Latte Macchiato is the, the drink, but uh, uh, it's a holy uh, Italianismo di secondo grado, as Seriani would say, so uh, an autonomous semantic evolution within uh, the target language. Or uh, on the other hand, mozzarella, sometimes mozzarella cheese, mozzarella case, and others uh, very present uh, uh, and uh, more and more common in many languages. Or some of the incipient Italianisms would be bufala or duya, which is an interesting case because it's a dialectalism. It is uh, from Calabrese. I think it's used in, in you will, of course, find it in, in New York City or uh, wherever in North America, uh, in German, English, and other languages becoming more and more uh, used, whereas a couple of years ago, it was totally unknown to the common language user. So I just conclude on that and thank you very much for your time and attention.